Um, <clears throat> I'm going to wait a couple minutes to see if anybody hops on our live, but if you watch this later, um, after the live is over, and you want to learn more about uh, doing one of these pieces, we're going to work on a Duncan Fife replica. And I'm going to go over a little bit of what Duncan Fife was about, um, his furniture, his originals, and his um, replicas, which were taken up in the about the 1920s to 1930s to about 1938. So. What I have here is a buffet from a Duncan Fife uh, replica, reproduction they actually call them. Um, and I have the table, the six chairs, and the buffet. They look pretty good when you look at them. I, I loaded some pictures yesterday. They look kind of okay when you're um, looking at them from a distance, but then when you get up close, you see the scratches, the grooves, the nicks, the, you know, all the things that don't make it so nice. And I can see why these people gave up this set um, because it was looking like that. But on the other hand, it can be really well. I could restore this right to straight wood if I wanted to, but I don't really want to. I want to sort of modernize it. Um, these are, they have to be in mint condition before they'd even be worth maybe $2,000 for the entire set. So that would be the buffet, the six chairs, and the table. So they're not a super valuable piece um, as they are as reproductions. However, if you have a, an original Duncan Fife from the late 1800s to say 1840 when he was making them, um, those are worth about fifty to one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a set. So you always want to make sure if you have one that looks like this um, to have someone assess it or at least know where to look for marks. He often never signed his furniture, and um, that was true even of painters uh, back in the day. A lot of them never signed their art, even though they're super valuable now. So sometimes that's what people look for is the non-mark. Um, but Duncan Fife, um, he would import um, hardwood. So he would import mahoganies and maples. He would use hardwood and he would carve into it sometimes. On the table legs of a Duncan Fife dining table, they're, they're carved into. Um, they're kind of cute little ornate table legs. I kind of like them. And they always have brass um, ornate feet on them. Um, there's many different types of chair backs. Um, they're really solid. So what he was about was he didn't really like all of the, the really uh, gaudy looking furniture of, of the time. So say the 1700s and 1800s. He really didn't like the Rococo look, which is the really ornate super ornate look and he didn't like uh, gothic which was also super ornate um, he didn't like um, a lot of the, the the foofiness of the furniture so he wanted to go back to a neoclassic style which was just straight lines really clean look good wood and just minimum carving and it was just a totally different look for the day so he I think it was his first shop he opened in about 1795 somewhere around there <clears throat> um, his name originally was Fife F-I-F-E he's from Scotland and when he moved to the United States I believe it was New York he became Fife P-H-Y-F-E so uh, the name is Duncan Fife either way but um, he had a shop there with his son his one son died and then he carried on with his um, other son until uh, people started saying that his furniture was too boring, wasn't fancy enough, it wasn't ornate enough, and that was really kind of a crushing blow to him. So eventually he stopped making furniture, and it kind of, you know, people had it, and then it kind of went out of style. Uh, Queen Anne stuff came in, and it was a little bit more, more ornate. But then um, in the 1920s, and I can't remember the exact year, uh, reproduction started so if you have a Queen Anne hatch like I have one here I've done it in fact there's a video on it if you want to go back and watch the video of this Queen Anne hatch we redid in black um, it's also a reproduction so reproductions are all over the place they're basically not worth much um, you can pick them up for anywhere from you know a hundred to 
four or five hundred dollars a piece. Um, and but if you paint them, if you refinish part of them and paint them, they become more valuable at, just as a modern piece because people are getting these painted and putting back putting them back in their house, and they'll last for many many more years. The nicks and dings and gouges are taken out of them. The paint looks nice. The style is nice. It fits with home decor. Um, a lot of these pieces can be just really classic lines that last for many, many years and even, you know, hand down to your grandkids kind of thing if they want it. But so the piece I'm working on is a Duncan Fife replica or reproduction is what the technical term is. Um, and it would be still, <clears throat> so we are in 2020 in another month, it would be 95 years old to 90 to 95 years old, this piece. Um, so it's considered vintage uh, antique is 99 plus years vintage is 50 to 99 years or 98 years um, mid-century modern is 50 to 60 years art deco is about 19 late 1920s to 40 kind of thing so um, the reproductions came out and people started buying them again although the reproductions um, from what I've seen and what I've, from what I've read, the reproductions generally always have a mahogany top at least. Mahogany or maple top. Um, so the, re the people who did the reproductions wanted to keep that the same as what Fife had done with always using really good hardwood. So I'm positive this one has a mahogany top. So I want to talk a little bit about what we're going to do to this piece and then I'm going to strip it with you today because I know that some people really are still quite afraid of using paint stripper. They really don't know what to do with it. They might not, I mean, they might have tried and it's just been a mess, but there is a pretty easy way to do it. So I'm going to go over that and at least we're going to get it, uh, the top strip today. Then I'm going to let it dry and I will sand it out later. So I might come on later tonight. If not tonight, I'll come on tomorrow and do a little bit more work. But this, this piece will probably be in four pieces. So I'll show you what it looks like. And I have seen a lot of painters um, doing one of these pieces. I have to adjust this here a little bit. I've got a paper around it right now because... When I stain, when I strip the top, I want to come and do this piece here. And oftentimes when we do the edge, it drips down over the front and can get onto the other wood, which you might think is a good thing, but actually it's not. <laughs> um, I like when I'm sanding the rest of it, I like to be the same depth that I have to sand it all over. So if I have paint stripper dripping down on here, it's going to eat my finish off to a lower depth than everything else. So. That just makes it a little bit worse for sanding it. That's what I found anyway. So, um, what I want to do with this is I want to keep this top part, this mahogany part, stained. But I'm going to take this old cherry stain off of it, and I'm going to be putting on um, a nice lighter mocha or espresso type stain. So it'll be dark, but not this cherry dark darkness. And then I'm going to use a paint called raw silk, which is a fusion mineral paint color. Um, it's just a slight antique white. It's uh, just a very off white, kind of like, um, um, I know there's a Benjamin Moore color that's mountain something, mountain snow I think it is, that's a really nice off white. But this is a really beautiful paint for doing furniture with. It goes on beautifully. So we're going to do that. And then um, I might do a little bit of blending on this piece uh, around some of the edges and around the doors. I'm not positive yet, but I am considering that. But then what I want to do <clears throat> at the end, once it's painted, is I want to put this transfer on the whole front of the piece. So um, this transfer is huge. You can see that. And it says, uh, La Petite Boutique. The vin, so it's the little boutique of wine. I thought it was really cute, and I thought it would be perfect for this buffet because I am going to be selling this as a buffet. Um, now this transfer is black lettering, so because it's black lettering, I have to do the piece in a light color. So it can be like a light yellow, light gray, um, a white uh, powder blue. It can be any light color. 
but I like the antique look with the raw silk and then this type of transfer with the dark. You can get these transfers with white lettering. So if you were to paint this in a, in a midnight blue, say, or coal black or bayberry, um, any dark color or any color chalk paint, if you use chalk paint, um, then you can use the white lettering and you would order the white lettering to put over top of it. These flat surface um, pieces are excellent for putting transfers or decoupage over. So I also had some really neat decoupage um, papers that I've bought, but I just thought I like this transfer and because it's going to be going in a dining room after, I thought it was kind of suitable to have the little boutique of wine. Uh, on the front of it. So we'll show you how to do that too. And so that's what I mean. This will be like a four part thing. It's not going to be a quick, um, I mean, I could still have it done in about a week or so, but it's going to be a few, um, a few times of doing this. So I'll show you a bit about, uh, paint stripper because I know a lot of you that are new to us and following us, um, haven't maybe done this much yet, or you're a little bit nervous about doing it. So I'm going to just show you a few things you'll need to do paint stripper. These gloves are really well used. These are a heavy uh, rubber glove. They're not kitchen gloves and they're not um, nitrile gloves. They are, a, they are actually for doing chemicals or paint stripper. So these will not allow your fingers to be burned. If you use regular, the, you know, the regular blue nitrile gloves or white ones, the paint stripper will get on it, burn right through into your skin. So it is a caustic material, so if you don't um, want to get burnt, make sure your legs are protected, your arms are protected, and you need to put glasses on, safety glasses on, even if you wear regular glasses, put these over top. I have had, um, when I didn't wear them one time, I had the paint stripper splash up right to the corner of my eye, and that was enough to scare me that I don't fool around with it anymore. So. Um, this is the paint stripper I'm using. It's called Clean Strip, although I was getting a really nice one at Home Depot that I loved, and this one doesn't seem to be as strong, so I don't know why, but I'll try it again today. I'm hoping I have enough. Um, after it's, uh, this is the spatulas. You can use one of these. This one's super sharp. This one's not as sharp. It's well used. But when you're doing your paint strip and you're taking it off, make sure these ends don't gouge into your wood so you don't need to press really really hard you might have to take it off and then redo your paint stripper a second coat um, this one is much sharper so i'm not sure that i'll even use this one but we'll see but any type of sharp spatula um, just so it gets right under the, the yucky stuff um after it's after it's stripped um you take your paper towel or your shop cloth and you wipe your paint stripper on it and throw it in a box or a bucket and just let it dry out before you put it in your garbage bin. Um, it's not flammable but it is yucky. So I don't like it getting messed up in my big garbage bin. Um, you can put it in a, usually I have like a coffee tin or some type of old tin I use to put my yucky paper in. This is a little container for when we take the handles off. Um, if you've ever lost a piece of your handles, <laughs> like I have done in the shop, you know that it's nasty trying to find a replacement. So I always put everything in a bucket. Um, the handles on these are beautiful, so I'll show you those in a little bit too. So after we get the paint stripper off, we take mineral spirits and a little piece of steel wool. This is uh, the 3 or 2 -0 or 3 -0. I think it's the 3 -0 steel wool. Um, and it, I buy it in these bundles now because I use so much. These are like $4 a box. They're super cheap. Um, and they come in these little rolls, right? So this is a steel wool roll. It's not a pad. And then all you do is you unroll how much you want. And you can literally tear it apart. Or what I do often is I cut it apart. Or you can just wad the whole roll up and use that with your paint stripper. So if you put paint stripper on wood that's had the, the stripper and it's come off and you've taken it off. This is the last thing to get the residual paint stripper off and it leaves a little bit of a sanded finish. Then all that will be dried and then it gets sanded with my um, palm sander. This is my palm sander. Um, 
And this one, I changed the paper out right now. It's got a 220 in it from another project, but uh, I will use a 150 or a 180 after this is dried, after it's all stripped. And that will get it down to a perfect, perfect finish so that we can restain it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that because that's my goal for today is to get this thing stripped down. So I had my steel wool out. And I'm going to move the camera in a minute here so you can see really well. Um, and if you have any questions, just leave me a question and I'll answer it later. I can't always see questions when I'm, hi there, when I'm doing this. But um, let's get rid of some of this stuff here first. And make room for what we're going to, you need a, um, chip brush. This is a chip brush. This one's been used for a few different things. This is just a really coarse brush and this is just a brush on the um, paint stripper. You don't want to use one of your good brushes, although you can really. I mean, you can use your good brushes if you want to. And you can wash this paint stripper out, although it really smells. So um, with these chip brushes, I generally just suck them after I've used them for paint stripper. So, let's, so what you do, put your glasses on, and then what I do is take something, which I don't have. Where's my screwdriver? I just need to pop this um, lid off here. Child-proof and human-proof lids. And what I do, you can put this in a bowl, some kind of a metal bowl, because it will eat through plastic. But I just pour it on just in bits if I can get it to come out and it is a gel so it's going to come out kind of thick I notice I didn't clean this first I didn't bother dusting it or TSPing it or anything because the paint stripper is going to eat everything anyway so what you it takes quite a bit of this stuff actually so don't be surprised if you go through a lot of it. And then we will um, whoop, brush this out. Now I'm going to go right up on the back here and I'm going to peel it off there too. So you need a, a good coat on here. Um, the other thing is to ventilate the room which I don't have right now, but I'm going to any second here. I'm not going to do the edges yet because I can actually sand those if I don't want to use paint stripper. So I'll just see how this goes first. If this is good paint stripper on this particular finish, it should take it off within about 10 minutes or less. Sometimes it's much faster. And I'm going to open the garage door a little bit because it's starting to get strong. Hold on. Okay, so that's going to vent through here and give me some fresh air. So I'm going to put a little bit more here because it's not quite enough. So, and it's going on nice. I can see it's starting to pull up the uh, finish underneath already. So that's what I want. And you don't need to work it a ton, but you do need to keep it moist. So if it's starting to look like it's drying out, just go over it with another layer. I'm going to go right up on the back. And push this in here too. Now this buffet had a whole bunch of dings and nicks on the top. Plus, it had a really lovely, um, a lovely water stain. You know those white kind of water stains when the wax <laughs> gets kind of wrapped? I have one of those too. Okay, so let's just let this work. This is starting to come up. I can see it coming up underneath, so that's good. This can, um, Clean Strip says it takes... I think it's 10 to 15 minutes, something like that, about 15 minutes, but oftentimes it doesn't take that long, really. It's quite fast acting stuff. We'll see. We'll see what happens here. So I'm going to turn my lights off so you can see better. I don't 
know if that's any better. Making sure all the ends are touched. That's all done. This is all nice. So I'm just going to let that sit for a minute. Um, once I get this all stripped and then let it do the uh, mineral spirits to get the residual off and then sand it later when it's dry again, I will be using a gel stain. Um, I know Fusion Mineral Paints has new gel stains out, but I don't have any of those. So I'm going to be using a Verithane gel stain in probably Kona or espresso I'm not sure which yet now I see a little bit back here where it's kind of drying out on this back this back rail so I'm gonna wet that if it stays moist it'll keep working as soon as it dries it kind of slows down it doesn't stop but it just really slows down it's a pain in the bum so you want to keep it going now it looks pretty good I don't see it hugely bubbling up or anything and usually Usually if it's working pretty good, it's bubbling, but it's kind of rippling. It's got a kind of a weird ripple effect. I don't know if you can see that on it. Can you see the ripples that are happening there? And you can see in here where it's kind of starting to lift it up already. I'm just going to do a little test spot with my spatula and see. Let's see if it's working. Yeah, it's coming up. I wouldn't say it's huge, but you can see you can see how dark this um you can see how dark this is. This is the stuff that it's just brought up. So I'm gonna spread that out a little bit. It's got a really dark cherry stain on it. So and probably years and years and years of um Furniture polish, wax, I mean, before they had furniture polish, they used shellac, layers and layers and layers and layers and layers of shellac or wax. Wax has been around for a long time, like beeswax, so that would have been what they would have used. But what I want to get, I might not get this down to where it's perfect, but what I am wanting to get is to where my knife here slides easily. It's getting right underneath and right on top of the surface of the wood. So that is actually perfect. Okay, so I think that's pretty much cooked. Um, I'm going to put this down somewhere safe. I'm just using a little box for my disposal because I don't have a coffee can here. So... To get this off, just start pushing it all to one end. So I'm going to start down here. If you feel it sticking a little bit, wipe it on your cloth. And then I'm going to go down one direction. And I'm pushing it all to one end. Just takes a couple minutes. Just go really carefully. If you feel it sticking in spots, that means it's still got a little bit of the finish on it that you have to do a second coat on. So you can see my rag is even filling up a lot. One more. Most of this is being pushed to the other end because it's easier just to take it off one end than it is to put it on your rag bit by bit by bit. And it's really coming off nice now. Okay, so that cloth is almost full. This just push into the middle a little bit on an angle so you don't get it all over you. I can't really move the uh, camera much, but I'll show you. You see it pooling there. I've got it all kind of piling up in one spot. And here's some more. So I'm pushing it to one end on purpose because I'm going to dump it off the end into my rag and get rid of it. So let's do that. Get another cloth. You'll use quite a bit of paper towel doing this. <laughs> so, so I'm going to go over here. I don't know if you can see me dumping it right off the end. Now the best thing to do is have a nice can right at the end. But here I am sliding it off. 
I'm dumping it onto my rag and folding it over. It's very gooey. Another reason you want to really wear gloves. And normally I have a apron on, but it's actually really cold out here today, so um, I'm trying to do this without an apron today. <laughs> And I should be okay, but I'd rather be warm today than worry about stuff on my jacket, so. Okay. So that's a little bit there. Um, I need to get my paper towel over here. And I'm gonna just take it and wipe this back real off. So I can feel it's a little bit sticky gooey in here, which is fine. I'm just trying to get the worst of it off right now, off this back rail. Get right into that groove there. So it does look like it is mahogany under here, which is pretty classic of the reproduction pieces. Take the majority of it off with my cloth. Now I can feel as I'm doing this, it's really sticky all over. So that means one thing. It means a second coat of thinner. So I'll get my brush and I'll get my paint stripper. Now this, this coat will take the residual of everything off. So, and I'll probably use a little bit less paint stripper, but just brush it on. This coat will go pretty fast because it's almost down to nothing here. I can really see the, um, the wood coming up, the nice grain of the mahogany coming up. Mahogany has such a gorgeous, gorgeous grain. It's beautiful. So even just, you know, the, even just the top of this, if it was mahogany as a reproduction is just gorgeous. I mean, I would never cover it up. I would never paint the top of a mahogany piece that's, you know, that you can just sand down and bring back to life. I have seen these things painted one end to the other completely, and I don't really like that. I wouldn't do that. I think a piece that has some wood and some paint is really just the perfect blend. But if you do, all your pieces just painted. I think that sort of takes away from it somehow. Okay, so that's the second coat and that coat's gonna go pretty fast. Okay. So, I'll let that sit for a minute. Um, down along here, I have got the, the paint stripper Kind of spilled over a little bit and you can see it's eaten off a little bit here and that's why i have the paper here because i don't want it to drip down on the rest of, of the unit so okay now this back here i will not get it all off with this you can't really use a scraper in there get a little bit in the groove i guess but it's pretty much you have to take it off with a uh, paper towel first and then steel wool and steel wool and um, mineral spirits. So already this is really bringing up the very last of the, the stuff. It's coming up really nicely. I'm trying to get right at the back of this crack this time. I'm pulling it this way. You don't want to scrape your wood though, so just make sure that your your spatula, the ends of it, are not digging into the wood really harshly. I'm not even supposed to be touching my camera thing with these gloves on because they have paint thinner but or paint stripper but so now I'm gonna go here. And it's because it's sliding, you can hear it. And it's not sticking anywhere and you can feel it just gliding then I know for sure that the last of the um, gunk stain the old stain the old wax the old everything is off of here I come this way 
this way. And this way. And then you get more paper towel. You do the same thing. Catch it. Normally I have like a, you know those, um, those Costco tins you can get with the, um, casseroles and things in them. Those are great to save for when you're doing paint stripping if you <laughs> ever have a project you know is coming up because they catch all this junk and it's a metal tin so it's easy. Okay, can you see this? I call this the paint remover toilet is what I call this part. It's just my own term. Okay. So there's still a bit left on there. And I'm gonna catch it real quick. See, this is exactly, <laughs> this is exactly why I covered that spot. Because it does slop. So I'm moving, removing the rest of it with paper towel and it's gonna stick a little bit as I'm doing that. And that's fine. So you can see a little bit of the wood. I don't know if you can see that very well where you are. I'm going to try and get as much of this off of the back rail as I can. And it's not coming off very well. And you're going to find that a lot with rails. Paint thinner is, or paint stripper is really hard to get off. What I'm going to do now is wipe up this mess on my floor. Get my step in it. Okay. So now we need, wherever it is, we need the uh, mineral spirits and a steel wool. So what I'm going to do first is the back rail because it has a lot of paint thinner on it, or paint stripper on it still. So I want to get that off while it's still damp. So all you do is pour your steel wool in and make sure you're wearing gloves. And I'm going to go across the back here. And can you see how it's taking off the rest of the paint stripper? The steel wool is taking the paint stripper off. And the mineral spirits is eating the residual. So that's how you do railings. It's a little bit of a chore getting it off, but it does come off. Now, because this wood at the back, I don't know if it's mahogany. It might be. It kind of looks like a mahogany grain. So even though I'm doing this, once it dries, I still have to sand it down. So paint stripper gets the old stain off, the old wax off. There's no prep you have to do before paint stripper to the wood. Um, you just have to apply it, let it work, take it off, clean it with mineral spirits and SOS after. And then once it's dry again, which mineral spirits dries pretty fast, but once you dry again, um, then you would take your sandpaper to all of this and really get it nice. You want to get it to a nice, fairly close to pure wood surface as you can for restaining. So yeah, it's a bit of a chore, but it does do the job. So I want to stay with the grain. I don't want to be sanding this way. I want to stay with the grain. I'm going to put some more mineral spirits and I'm going to do the whole top with it. So between the sandpaper and the mineral spirits, which will eat into the paint stripper, it should take a lot of this residual off. And whatever's left gets sanded off. And that is how you strip a tabletop, a fade top, dresser top, whatever you have that you need to do paint stripper with. I know it's not the best video out there for quality, but 
um, it gives you an idea of what you have to do. You can see the nice wood coming through. I really like that. So this is definitely mahogany. Um, they really didn't used to make people say, you know, solid mahogany or solid this, solid that. They're usually not. They usually used to make pieces with um, maybe the top or the door fronts, a certain type of wood. But then they would make um, the rest of it in a cheaper type of wood. So when you see people that say, you know, it's solid oak or solid this or solid that, that would be pretty rare because furniture makers, even Duncan Fife, though he used mahogany, um, he would use mahogany mostly for the tabletop as well or the buffet top and then other cheaper wood like maple for the rest of the doors and things. So this is really coming off nicely. Now I'll show you something here um, that happens just about every time to me and it will probably happen to you. This here, if you can see here, um, you can see this is still st a lot of stain, right? So that means that my paint stripper wasn't thick enough here to take off the rest of this. So I need to go back and redo this area here, let it sit. It's coming off here not bad, but you can see spots where there's still paint stripper. So don't ever leave it like that. Just take another, you know, tablespoon or two of your paint stripper and put it right back on. Get it down to this look where it's nice, just wood grain. Um, and then wait for it to dry and then do your sanding because that's, and here again, you see here, it's doing the same thing. And that's really, really common um, with cleaning these pieces. So just be careful when you're doing your edges and your ends that you have enough paint stripper on. You can see right here, there's another part where the paint stripper got missed. So I'm going to take a paper towel and wipe the mineral spirits and gunk off. Then I'm going to check these bits here and I'm going to put more stuff on there. But I think it's starting to look pretty neat. It's got um, a, a really beautiful wood grain. So when that is restained, it's going to really look pretty. Really, really pretty. So, you know, something that was kind of old and ucky and banged up and nobody really wanted in their house anymore with a little bit of work can be really nice. Do you see that now? Beautiful, hey? I just love revealing the old, um, the old look of these pieces, like how they must have looked when they were new. Wax and stain and shellac and everything gets old. And when it gets old, it becomes dark, especially if it's been waxed many times, which you can bet your boots in a hundred years. Um, and that's what makes it look so ucky and dark, really, just gross. So I'm going to put this again right over here a little bit. So I'm going to be more careful where I put it now. And I might even leave that on a little bit longer. So I'm going to make sure I've got a good coat. Any spots that I think there might be, um, Problem right here, put on a little bit here. Let's see, down here, a little bit more on the edge here. I really want to get rid of that ridge. In here, there was some, and then over here.
block, but I want to show you this wood now as it's coming up. Isn't that beautiful? Just absolutely gorgeous, and that is mahogany. Beautiful grain, beautiful grain. The back is a little bit lighter, but it still looks like it's probably oak back there, maybe. Um, I'll show you the front a little bit now that I've got it pretty much cleaned up here. has really ornate handles you can see those there um, the handles are beautiful these handles at some place like Lee Valley I have seen them for about $15 a piece so there is easily maybe $160 $170 worth of hardware on here so we'll be just cleaning these up with a little toothbrush and some TSP letting them dry and then I think I'm going to leave them fairly rustic, but I'm probably going to be putting some um, gold gilding wax on them just to bring up the color a little bit. And then we'll be putting the big transfer on there. So I'm going to let my, um, my paint stripper dry the last little bit of it. But that's pretty much it for how to, st to strip a piece. And then um, tomorrow or the next day will be... I'll do some prep in the meantime. What I'm going to do with these, take the hardware off, take my sanding block in about a 150 grit, nice good grit, sand it, sand the whole thing by hand, and then um, we'll start painting it. Um, it'll be really pretty. This will be a good piece. So I hope that helped you guys um, share these videos with your friends. Um, if you have any other painting friends that maybe want to join us, and um, uh, you can follow us on YouTube after these are done. I usually wait a few days and then I spend about an hour, an hour and a half redoing them into a YouTube video so there's a little bit more information. But um, share, subscribe, follow us, and share it with your friends who love to paint. And we'll see you next time. Bye.